Hi everyone, this is the second part of my three-part sequence on production and costs. This video will introduce several important cost concepts. In general, variable costs are costs that change depending on the amount of production, whereas fixed costs are costs that are the same regardless of how much a company produces. Recall from the recording on short-run production that the number of workers is variable in the short run, whereas the number of machines is fixed. Therefore, the cost associated with capital is referred to as the fixed cost, and the cost associated with labor is referred to as the variable cost. Adding up fixed cost and variable cost results in the firm's total cost in the short run. I'll talk about long run cost in the third and last recording. In order to try to put production and cost in a real world setting, I obtained annualized cost data from Rocket Joe's Pizza a pizza restaurant located on the Lower East Side of New York City. Labor, utilities, as well as pizza ingredients and toppings would all be categorized as variable costs since the more pizzas Rocket Joe's produces, the more it must spend on labor, electricity, water, pizza ingredients, and toppings. On the other hand, rent is a fixed cost because regardless of whether Rocket Joe's produces 100 pizzas, 1 million pizzas, or absolutely no pizzas, they must still pay their landlord $60,000 in rent. Again, we are simplifying costs in this class to pertain to just labor and capital. I googled commercial pizza ovens and found that a mid-range commercial pizza oven costs around $15,000. Let's suppose that Rocket Joe's does not have the money to pay for the pizza oven up front, so they take a loan with a $50 per day payment. For simplicity, Let's assume that Rocket Joe's pays each worker $70 per day. I'm going to impose a strong assumption that each worker gets paid the same wage. Although this is obviously unrealistic, it will allow us to calculate our cost concepts much more easily. This chart connects the production function chart we analyzed in the previous recording with the cost concepts that I just introduced. First, notice that we calculate the variable cost which again is a cost of workers, by multiplying the number of workers by the wage, which I gave as $70 per worker. Second, the fixed cost is equal to $50 regardless of the amount of pizzas produced because we only have one pizza oven, and as we mentioned in the previous recording, capital is fixed in the short run. Notice that hiring no workers leads Rocket Joe's to not pay any money towards labor, whereas an increase in workers leads to an increase in variable cost. On the other hand, notice that Rocket Joe's must pay $50 regardless of the amount of pizza they produce. Indeed, this is why we refer to the cost of workers as being variable, whereas the cost of capital is fixed. Finally, total cost is simply calculated as the sum of variable cost and fixed cost. Notice that the total cost is equal to the fixed cost when the restaurant produces no pizzas since they would still have to pay for the loan on the pizza oven. Just like with variable cost, total cost increases as production increases. The next two slides introduce two cost concepts that will be very important for us in future chapters, marginal cost and average total cost. Marginal cost is calculated as the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. As such, marginal cost provides information on how much it costs Rocket Joe's to produce an additional pizza. We have a dash associated with the initial value of marginal cost since we can't calculate an increase in cost when there are no pizzas produced. More importantly, notice that marginal cost initially decreases and then increases. This is directly connected with the law of diminishing marginal returns discussed in the previous recording since the initial boost in worker productivity causes the cost of additional pizzas to go down when producing small batches of pizzas, whereas costs start to skyrocket when the law of diminishing marginal return sets in, such that additional workers provide a smaller boost to the production of pizzas. However, these unproductive workers get paid the same as the first few highly efficient employees. Average total cost is calculated as the total cost divided by the quantity. The initial value of average total cost is a dash because we cannot calculate average total cost when there are no pizzas produced since any number divided by zero is undefined. 
Notice that the same relationship between marginal product and average product applies to the relationship between marginal cost and average total cost. That is, when the new value of marginal cost is greater than the previous value of average total cost, the new value of average total cost increases. However, when the new value of marginal cost is less than the previous value of average total cost, the new value of average total cost decreases. This relationship will hopefully make more sense when we illustrate the cost curves at the end of this recording. Before we get to the graph though, we need to introduce a couple more cost concepts, average fixed cost and average variable cost. Average fixed cost is calculated as the fixed cost divided by quantity, whereas average variable cost is calculated as the variable cost divided by quantity. Just like how we calculated total cost as fixed cost plus variable cost earlier in this recording, we can similarly calculate average total cost as average fixed cost plus average variable cost. This table extends the calculations that we had been introducing so far. Recall that we started the first recording by discussing the production function, which is a relationship between labor, capital, and output. We started this recording by calculating fixed cost, variable cost, and total cost before getting into the two most important cost concepts, marginal cost and average total cost. Now we can see the calculations for both average fixed cost and average variable cost. Notice that just like with average total cost and marginal cost, average variable cost initially declines before increasing when additional pizzas are produced. Interestingly, average fixed cost is always decreasing in output since fixed cost, which is the numerator in the average fixed cost calculation, stays the same, while quantity of pizzas, which is the denominator in the average fixed cost calculation, always increases as we progress down the rows of this table. Here is a screenshot of the textbook's graph on the marginal cost, or MC curve, the average total cost, or ATC curve, the average variable cost, or the AVC curve, and the average fixed cost, or AFC curve. I like to think of the marginal cost curve as resembling the Nike swoosh, whereas the average total cost curve and average variable cost curves both look like a smile. Finally, the average fixed cost curve is simply downward sloping. We'll wrap up this recording by talking about why these cost concepts are illustrated in this manner. First, notice that the marginal cost, average total cost, and average variable cost curves are all U-shaped. Recall from our cost table for the pizza restaurant that the values for each of these cost concepts initially decrease when additional pizzas are produced, but because of the law of diminishing marginal returns, these cost concepts eventually start to increase when large amounts of pizzas are made. Second, notice that the minimum point of the average total cost and average variable cost curve occur when each of them intersect the marginal cost curve. Again, this is because of the relationship we discussed about comparing new values of marginal cost with previous values of average total cost. The same logic applies with marginal cost and average variable cost. Third, the average fixed cost curve is always downward sloping since the value of fixed cost, which was $50 in our numerical example, would be spread out over more and more pizzas as quantity increases. For example, producing only 14 pizzas would lead to an average fixed cost of $50 divided by 14, which is equal to $3.57. Producing 35 pizzas reduces average fixed cost to $50 divided by 35, which is $1.43. Indeed, producing 217 pizzas would continue to reduce average fixed cost to merely 23 cents, which is $50 divided by 217. Finally, notice that the gap between average total cost and average variable cost becomes narrower as quantity increases. This is because average total cost equals average fixed cost plus average variable cost. Since average fixed cost necessarily decreases with increased quantity, average variable cost converges towards the value of average total cost. This slide summarizes the four trends that I just discussed. By now, you're probably appreciating that I turned these two chapters into recordings as opposed to having you sit through this in class. 
Before proceeding to part three of the three-part sequence, I encourage you to take some time playing with the Excel spreadsheet I provided on Moodle to make sure that you can calculate the tables covered in this video. Remember, you'll be able to use the Excel spreadsheet on the final exam, so it's in your best interest to make sure you are comfortable with the calculations introduced in this video. Feel free to email me with any questions that you have.